backstage at the soap operas today at noon. And decorating a Christmas tree is a tradition that goes back to the 16th century. German settlers brought the Christmas tree to Pennsylvania in the 1830s, and the tradition took root by the end of that century. This year, Americans will buy 36 million Christmas trees. And we traveled to Ossining, New York this morning for some tree trimming tips. And joining us is Rachel Newman, the editor-in-chief of Country Living Magazine. Good morning. Good morning, Paula. Let's start with the tree itself. How do we keep it looking good after it's cut? Well, Paula, you'll want to keep your tree as cool as possible. And we suggest keeping it out on an unheated back porch if you buy it way in advance of putting it up. You might even want to put it in a bucket of water, providing the weather isn't freezing. And once you do bring it inside to put it up, you want to keep it away from a heat source. You wouldn't want to put it near a radiator or a fireplace like if you're keeping here. the fire going all the time. And before putting it into the stand, give it one last cut. Take about a half an inch off the bottom. This opens up the vessels so that the moisture can move up through the tree during the week. And then once it's in the stand, always remember, put water in that stand every single day. You've created a, a very delicate uh, looking tree here for us. Is there a way you can do that inexpensively? Yes, the most inexpensive trees are actually the most classic. In a country living, we like very traditional trees. So what we've done, we've done a, an old fashioned Christmas tree with strings of popcorn, cranberries, and our favorite motif, which is a heart, which we've made cookies, two different sizes of cookies. Very and nice. And finally, tiny little white lights. And these are imitating the candles that were on the original Christmas trees. And something to remember about putting up your lights, which you do first, is to put them into the center of the tree to give the tree body. Okay, now the real work begins. Let's try to string these cranberries and popcorns this morning. Well, you'll first want to do your cranberries because that's the heaviest thing that goes on the tree. And we use dental floss. You'll need a large needle with an eye, an eye for the dental floss, large eye. And you'll cut your strings of dental floss about, I'd say, three to four feet long. Um, and you start by putting on it one, the first cranberry, knotting it around the cranberry. You get all the way to the end of the string, knot it around the last cranberry. And then you put these tiny little ornament hooks between the last two cranberries on either end. Then you have your string and you're all ready to go. How about uh, tackling the popcorn? It's a little lighter, isn't it? Yeah, the popcorn is much lighter. It's done almost the same way, but you use polyester thread instead of the dental floss. And you can do these short strings and then tie them together. Because it's so light, you don't have to worry about the weight. But by working with short strings, it's not as cumbersome as working with great big long strings. But two very important tips. For the popcorn, you must use day-old popcorn. Freshly popped popcorn will just crumble all over the place. And for the cranberries, use fresh, not frozen. If you use frozen cranberries, you're likely to have things that are melting like popsicles all around your rug. Yeah, imagine making a mess that one has to right. clean up the rest of the day. Now, you've used cookies uh, as your uh, primary decoration on this tree. Uh, how do you do this and, and keep them from breaking? The secret is in the baking. And you start with a standard gingerbread dough, but you leave out the baking soda. That way, the cookies will retain their original shape. And we've baked about eight dozen cookies for this tree. Then the real big secret is to put the hole in the cookie and you use a garden variety sipping straw. That's all you need. Yep. It, you take the dough out, you cut it just as you would a regular cookie. Um, we've used these little cookie cutters. They come in all sizes, even tiny ones if you want to do a tiny little tree with little hearts on it. Or if you want to make your own shape, you can just make a template out of very stiff cardboard, trace around it with a knife, and then you've got your heart. Finally, after you've baked it, you must let the cookies dry and harden. Then you ice them, put your bow through, attach a little ornament, this time we use a longer ornament, to the back of the bow, and you're ready to hang it on the tree. It's not all that difficult. In the, in the short time we have left, if you want to be a particularly efficient decorator this year, and you want to save this stuff for next year, can, can that be done? easy. The popcorn can just be saved in your freezer, and the cookie should be just kept away from air, so we suggest using a cookie tin and just storing it in a cool, dry place. All right, Rachel, thanks.
Thanks for the tip. Yeah.